Okay, welcome back to Process Dynamics and Control. Today we're going to be talking about valve design. Now, valves are a common final control element for many control applications. It's the thing that we actually change in the process to achieve a control objective for chemical process control. Now, um, there are many different types of valves. Uh, for example, you can have uh, you know a gate valve. Uh, you can have a globe valve. Um, you know, you could have an angle valve, a swing check, and also a disc type. So, of all these valves, um, which one do you think would be a good choice for preventing flow from going one direction, um, but allow it to go another direction? So, just looking at these different valves, we can see that a check valve, for example, would allow flow to go in one direction, but would close off um, as the flow tried to go the other direction. Um, you know, and also which valve is going to have the lowest uh, loss, um, you know, the lowest loss if, if we have it open most of the time, okay? So, um, you know, maybe a disc valve, for example, may have a, a low loss. Um, and, and there are going to be different types of valves that are going to be good for uh, situations where we want very fine control um, of the flow and very accurate flow um, control. So different types of valves, uh, different uses, uh, these are just some cutaway views. So let's go on to, uh, for example, a butterfly valve. Now a butterfly valve is very good for on-off type control. When it's fully open, there's very low frictional loss within the valve and uh, we can achieve uh, you know, very low energy losses there uh, due to uh, the valve. Uh, but then it will close very quickly and shut off the flow, okay? Now, if you had very fine control, you can imagine that as you close that valve just slightly, um, you know, just closing it uh, ever so slightly more, it's going to have very large change in the, uh, in, in the flow that goes through that valve. And so this one may not be the best valve for a very fine-tuned control of a flow. But let's go over to a globe valve, okay? I'm just going to show you the cutaway view of this, including the cage um, on, on this valve. And you can see a couple different things on this. You know, this is a uh, pneumatic uh, valve, pneumatically actuated valve. Uh, and so we're using air pressure to change the valve position either up or down. Now, some valves have a valve positioner on it. So if you command it to be, for example, 40% open, it has a feedback loop within that valve to either raise or lower the valve stem to achieve 40% open, regardless of what's happening in the process. Okay, so these uh, you know these valve positioners are much more accurate. They uh, you know they, they can control uh, to a much finer tolerance the flow in a system. And I, I've got a, a globe valve here. I'm just going to pick it up. It's a little bit heavy, um, but uh, okay, there we go. So this is an example of a globe valve. Uh, you can see that the flow um, is going to come in this direction and then leave the other direction. We have a valve stem. Okay, so I'm just going to hold that up. And then we have uh, a couple of air pressure inlets, one on the top and one on the bottom. So instead of being actuated by a, or moving by a spring, you actually have uh, air coming in from the top and the bottom. And uh, you know this, um, so this is one example of a uh, valve. Um, and you can see the cage is going to be down here, and this is the part of the valve positioner uh, right here, the controls that go into that. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and set this down. And uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, that is a globe valve, for example. Now, one of the things that we need to consider um, when designing a system is whether we want it to be fail open or fail close. So if everything shuts down, all the pressure is lost that pneumatically actuates the valve, uh, is this valve by default going to go to an open state or to a closed state? So one of the things that's important to consider is um, would it be better for the valve to remain open or remain closed? So for example, let's say you have a feed, uh, a reactive uh, feed to a reactor and if the power shuts off on the plant, um, you know, or there's some sort of failure, you'd rather have that valve for the feed to the reactor to close automatically. 
uh, versus cooling water to a reactor, uh, let's say a nuclear reactor, you'd want that valve to fail open, okay? And so um, some, a valve that, that fails closed, then we have to apply air pressure to then open the valve. So that's called an air to open valve or fail closed type valve. Um, if you have a, a fail open valve, then it's air to close it, okay? So it just depends on, on where the air is uh, being input into the system. There's often a diaphragm, okay? So as we pressurize one side of that diaphragm, it's gonna cause the valve stem to, in this case, to uh, rise, okay? And then as the air pressure is lost, then the valve stem is going to close. So this valve, for example, is going to be a fail, uh, fail closed or air to open type valve, okay? So let's just take a look at another one. Um, here is a, uh, you know, one of these uh, diaphragms with the spring actuator. Now the air is coming in from the top, okay? So as you increase the air pressure in the top, then it's gonna close the valve. Okay, so is this an air to open or air to close valve, okay? Um, so just think about that for a second. You know, is this, if I apply air pressure, does it open the valve or close the valve? And is it gonna fail open or fail closed? Um, so you probably got it right. The, this one is an air to close or fail open type valve, okay? So um, let's just go to a couple different valve designs. Um, one of the things that we can choose is, is the, you know, the geometry within the valve, and that influences some of the losses. Um, so here we have a globe. You might have a split body or an angle uh, type valve. Um, now, also, when we talk about um, trim, we can have the, the same style, but we can change the trim in the valve, okay? So that's how the valve, uh, you know, the, the stem is connected to this, uh, like a, a plunger that, that sits in the seat and the shape of that um, you know is going to be the the trim that goes into the valve and influences the lift versus flow characteristics of the valve okay so a common type of valve that we use uh, very frequently is actually called an equal percentage valve okay now as we uh, increase the lift by uh, one percent you get one percent more uh, so it, it's it's going to be a non-linear uh, correlation between lift and the flow that we get. Um, you know, the, the not attached to any process equipment, but just through the valve itself. There are also linear valves as well. So as you have additional lift, you get an equal fraction of of flow through the valve. Okay, and uh, you know, so there's different kinds of trims that we can apply. Another one, for example, is a quick open valve. Okay, so if we uh, have a, a little bit of lift, it's going to open very quickly, okay? So you can see the plun, you know, the, uh, the, the style of the trim that goes into that valve, uh, but there are many other types of uh, trim, okay? So here, for example, is a parabolic. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, quick opening as, as we discussed. Uh, one of the things that you'll see f quite frequently is a CV for a valve. Uh, now CV is, um, you know, it goes, it's gonna go into uh, an equation that we're gonna use for the valve design, but it essentially is the constant that relates uh, lift versus flow through the valve, okay? For, um, you know, this table, what it shows is stem position or lift um, versus the uh, body size, okay? And different CV values. It's just an example, you know, representative of, of some CVs for, a particular type of valve. Okay, so a valve is going to be characterized by the CV value. So let's go on to the valve design equation. Um, so here we have uh, the Q or the flow um, is going to be equal to CV times a lift function. Now if that's a linear valve, that's just going to be uh, F of L, it's just going to be a lift. Okay, so uh, that's going to be a linear valve. We're also going to be talking about um, equal percentage valves as well in this class, so linear or equal percentage valves. Um, and then you also have the square root of uh, a ratio here. Now this is the delta PV, so the, the delta P pressure across the valve, okay, that's the delta PV, and then uh, the specific gravity of the fluid that's flowing through the valve, 
Okay, so that's in the denominator. So this is the valve design um, equation, and it relates uh, the lift to the flow. And uh, you know, if we have constant pressure drop through the valve, then, uh, then, then it's just going to be lift and flow that are going to be the two variables in that problem. Okay, so, so let's go to um, a chart now. So this is kind of a flow chart of this overall process of designing a valve, uh, you know, which valve to use for a particular application. So first thing that we want to consider is the safety. Do we want this thing to fail open or fail closed? Um, and, and so that goes into like the cooling water versus reactants coming into the reactor. Because that's the first thing to choose, uh, which, one, which one we want. Then we want to calculate the, um, you know, the delta PV uh, required, the, the, the pressure drop across the valve that's required. Um, and that might be a function of Q as well. Okay, now the next thing um, we also want to consider is the design flow rate, okay? So that's going to help us choose um, a, a particular type of valve. Um, you know, if we're, if we're designing the system to be very high flow rates or a wide range of flow rates, you know, we're going to choose a different valve for each of those. Okay, so um, also we want to consider does the pressure change for our system very much? Okay, so the delta pressure for our system, how much does that change with changes in flow rate? Okay, so if that changes a lot with changes in, in flow rate, then we're going to want to use an equal percentage valve. And uh, with this equal percentage valve, it just changes that F of L function um, and with an R value between typically 20 and 50. Um, and then L is still the lift, but that's in, that's in the exponent um, of the, that function. So it's lift minus 1, so it's R to the lift minus 1. And, and so that would be your F of L in that design equation. Um, but if, so on the other hand, if the, the um, process pressure doesn't change very much with changes in flow, then we can select a linear valve. And, and the reason why we're going this yes, no route here is because we want the installed characteristic of our valve to be linear. Okay, so if we choose an equal percentage valve, then that means that we're going to get a linear response for the valve plus the system. Okay, but if the system doesn't really affect, uh, you know, the, the flow rate uh, through the system doesn't really affect the pressure drop in the system, then uh, we can choose a linear valve because then the installed characteristic of both of those is going to be linear. Okay, so then um, as a final step, after we've chosen uh, equal percentage or linear, then we want to go ahead and calculate the CV that we're going to need for uh, our particular application. And, and typically we want the pressure drop across the valve to be you know, a quarter to a third of the pressure drop across the system, the whole system. Okay, so we don't want it to be too much because then we have to install larger pumps to compensate for all of this pressure drop across the valve. Um, and, and also it helps us to maintain uh, controllability of the flow. So we can either increase or decrease the flow as we increase, open, or close our valve, okay? So then uh, what we want to do as a final step is just go ahead and plot the Q, the flow rate, versus the lift, or L, um, of the combined system to check the linearity of the com you know, this combined system, the system plus the valve, okay? So that's the final thing that we want to take a look at, and uh, we're just going to go through a brief application now um, just to show a, uh, an example application of how we do uh, a valve design.